I am beyond good and evil. I will be avenged. Lucifer dwells in us all. That is it. Richard Ramirez was 29 when he spoke those words in Southern California courtroom in 1989. He had just been sentenced to death following his conviction of 13 murders, 5 attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. When Ramirez heard that the court had sentenced him to death, he stated, Big deal. Death always went with the territory. I'll see you in Disneyland. Richard Ramirez was born Ricardo Leva Munoz Ramirez in El Paso, Texas on the 29th of February 1960. He was the youngest of five children born to Mexican immigrants. His father was a former policeman from Juarez who worked on the Santa Fe Railroad and was prone to violent outbursts. Ramirez claimed his father was physically abusive to the entire family. His mother worked at a boot factory where she was exposed to chemical fumes when she was pregnant with him. This may have attributed to the birth defects of her children ranging anywhere from respiratory difficulty to bone deformities. At the age of two, Richard had a dresser fall on him leading to a forehead laceration. At the age of five, he was hit in the head by a playground swing leading to him suffering epileptic seizures. While in the fifth grade, Richard was diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy. He also suffered grand mal seizures in school. With the exception of epilepsy, Richard had grown out of his other medical ailments and was considered to be a healthy, although hyper and aggressive child. According to reports, when he was 12, an older cousin, Miguel Ramirez, who was a Vietnam War veteran, had told stories to Ramirez and shown him pictures of him with the head of a woman that he had raped, tortured, and killed. A year later, Miguel had shot and killed his wife by shooting her in the head as Ramirez had watched. This caused Ramirez to shut down. Miguel was caught and sentenced to four years in a mental hospital. After the shooting, Ramirez moved in with his sister and her husband, who was an assistant peeping Tom. He took Richard with him on his excursions, peeping in on unsuspecting women all over town. When he was a little older, Richard got a job at a Holiday Inn during various odds and end jobs. He was caught by a husband of a guest when he attempted to rape the guest's wife. He beat Richard but then he refused to testify due to the fact that they were from out of town and felt that it was easier just to let it go. It was around this time that Richard started breaking into homes, experimenting with LSD and discovering Satanism. He dropped out of high school and moved to Los Angeles where he could commit various crimes, including car theft that he was briefly incarcerated for. On April 10th, 1984, a nine-year-old girl was found in the basement of a hotel where he was working. She was beaten, raped, and put on a pike. This was later to Ben Ramirez's first victim. I think most humans have in them the capacity to, co to commit murder. In June 1984, Ramirez committed his first known murder, raping and stabbing a 79-year-old widow. Her throat had been cut so severely that she was almost decapitated. He then waited 18 months before resuming his killings. February 21st, 1985, sisters Christina and Mary Caldwell, ages 58 and 71, were found dead in their homes. They had each been stabbed a dozen times. On March 17, 1985, Ramirez attacked 22-year-old Angela Barrios outside her home. He had shot her before entering her house. The bullet ricocheted off her keys as she pulled her hands up to her face. Inside was De La Koski, age 34, who Ramirez immediately shot and killed. Barrios survived. Within an hour of killing Okoski, Richard struck again in Monterey Park. He attacked 30-year-old Silen Yu and pulled her out of the car onto the road. He shot her several times and fled. A police officer found her still breathing, but she died before the ambulance had arrived. On March 27, 1985, Ramirez shot Vincent Zazara, age 64, and his wife, Maxine, age 44. Maxine's body was mutilated with several stab wounds and a tea carving over her left breast, and her eyes were gouged out. Ramirez placed them in a jewelry box and took them with him. The autopsy determined that the mutilations were post-mortem. Two months after killing the Cesara couple, Ramirez attacked a Chinese couple, 
Harold Wu, age 66, who was shot in the head, and his wife, Jean Wu, age 63, who was punched, bound, and then violently raped. For unknown reasons, Ramirez decided to let her live. May 30th, 1985, Ramirez attacked Malville Keller, 83, and her disabled sister, Blanche Wolf, 80, beating each with a hammer. Ramirez attempted to rape Keller but failed. Using lipstick, he drew pentagrams on Keller's thigh and on the wall in the bedroom. Wolf survived the attack. The next day, Ruth Wilson, 41, was bound and raped and sodomized by Ramirez while her 12-year-old son was locked in the closet. Ramirez slashed Wilson once, then bound her and the son together and left. June 2, 1985, Edward Wilgins, 29, was shot and killed by Ramirez. His girlfriend was raped several times by Ramirez but survived. From early June through early July, three more women were killed. Two had their throats slit, one was beaten to death, and all three had their homes invaded. July 5, 1985, 16-year-old Whitney Bennett survived after being beaten by a tire iron by Ramirez. July 7, 1985, Linda Fortuna, 63, was attacked and Ramirez tried to rape her but failed. July 20th, 1985, in Sun Valley, Ramirez shot and killed a 32-year-old man, Chita Asawahem, and his wife, Sakima, 29, was beaten and forced to perform oral intercourse. Ramirez then collected valuables and proceeded to leave. Later in the same day, a Glendale couple, Max and Keating, 66, and his wife, Lella, also 66, was shot and their corpses were mutilated. August 6, 1985, Ramirez shot both Christopher Peterson, 38, and his wife Virginia, 27, in the head. Miraculously, they both survived. On August 8, Ramirez attacked a diamond bar couple, fatally shooting Ahmed Zia, 35, before raping and sodomizing and forcing Zia's wife, Su Kiyi, 28, to perform fellatio on him. August 17, 1985, Ramirez shot to death 66-year-old man in San Francisco, also shooting and beating his wife, who survived the attack. August 24, 1985, Ramirez traveled 50 miles south of Los Angeles to Mission Viejo and broke into the Mediterranean village apartment of Bill Carnes, 29, and his fiancée, Inez Eckerson, 27. Ramirez shot Carnes in the head and raped Erickson. He demanded she swear her love for Satan and afterward forced her to perform oral intercourse on him. He then tied and left her. Erickson struggled to get at the window and saw the car Ramirez was driving. She was able to give the description of both Ramirez and his orange Toyota station wagon. A teenager later identified the car from the news reports and wrote down half of his license plate number. The car was found on August 28th and police were able to obtain one fingerprint that was in the mirror of the vehicle. This was a tremendous break as Ramirez is usually meticulous about wiping away all prints. On August 30th, 1985, six days after his last known murder, Ramirez's name and photograph were released to the public and the following day a man in East Los Angeles saw him and notified the police. As a chase ensued and Ramirez tried to steal another car, he was surrounded by a crowd and beaten until police arrived. Richard was arrested for 13 murders, 5 attempted murders, 6 rapes, 3 lewd acts of children, 2 kidnappings, 3 acts of forced oral copulation, 4 counts of sodomy, 5 robberies, and 14 burglaries. September 20th, 1989, at 2.20 p.m., Ramirez was convicted on 46 of the accounts in a Los Angeles courtroom in California. He was subsequently given the death sentence on October 3rd of the same year. At first, Richard was adamant about not pleading insanity at his defense. He did not want people to believe he was insane. He was more interested in people knowing he was a devout Satanist and that Satan would protect him and watch over him. As a self-described Satanist, Ramirez made various references to Satan during his legal proceedings. He once notably drew a pentagram on his palm that he showed the courtroom. His trial began in early 1989, and in September he was convicted of 13 murders. Nearly two months later, he was sentenced to death, with a judge stating that his crime showed cruelty, callousness, and viciousness beyond any human understanding. Ramirez never expressed remorse, and after receiving his sentence, he stated, Beyond your experience, I am beyond good and evil. Legions of the night, night breed. Repeat not the errors of night, Father, and show no mercy. I will be avenged. Lucifer dwells within us all. That's it. Big deal. Death always went with the territory. I'll see you in Disneyland. 
After spending many years in the appeals process, Richard decided to plead insanity in hopes that his sentence would be overturned. This is especially profound because initially Ramirez refused to confess or deny his crimes. All of a sudden, he is willing to admit guilt under the context that he was insane. In an interview by A&E Dr. Scott Bond, criminologist and author of Why We Love Serial Killers, The Curious Appeal of the World's Most Savage Murderers, was asked if Ramirez's childhood trauma and abuse could have led him to become a serial killer. Dr. Scott stated, There's always a question of whether serial killers are born or made. I believe Richard Ramirez was a sociopath as opposed to a psychopath. A psychopath is absolutely incapable of feeling any normal range of emotions. And that was the case of Ted Bundy or John Wayne Gacy, the killer clown. Ramirez, on the other hand, was prone to emotional outbursts, very spontaneous and volatile. A sociopath is developed through life experiences and manufactured in society. Also, unlike Bundy or Gacy, who plan their murders meticulously, Ramirez randomly picked homes to break into. A psychopath wouldn't do that. A psychopath needs control. So yes, all these factors I do believe contribute. But what seems to happen with some serial killers, and it happened with Jeffrey Dahmer, the BTK strangler, and Bundy, is that right around puberty, sex and violence fuse in their mind and they become aroused by violence. When his cousin showed him those photographs, Ramirez became sexually aroused, and that was right around the age of 13. During one of his incomplete murders, he attempted to strangle a girl with a phone cord. When she saw sparks emitting from the cord, he stopped and fled. He later stated that he believed Jesus had intervened to save her. On June 7, 2013, Richard Ramirez died of natural causes in San Quentin State Prison. He was 53.